Coming up, the bald man knife and tool thick atroce. I get a beautiful knife from Poland. And then we talk pig stickers. I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. One of my favorite comments from this past week was from Scott Beaver 26. He says, serrations, my imagination tells me I need them. That's awesome. That's a direct quote from yours truly from one of my recent Microtech videos. He said, I just purchased the green aluminum with serrations and have to say it's the best new folder. That's the stitch. Thanks for the video, sir. I agree 100%. I like that. Serration, my imagination tells me I need them. And uh, I guess I said that. But really what I meant is uh, that my imagination tells me I will need my knives long after they go dull, though I do very little with them to dull them. But the serrations will keep them going forever. That's why I am so into them recently. So uh, Scott Beaver, great minds. Think alike, sir. Uh, second favorite comment from this week was from Rolando Estocada, and he's been coming to Thursday Night Knives recently. Great to talk to him. He says, great episode. I'm working with Zach on putting together a martial movement episode on my channel. Should be out this week. And he's talking about Zach from uh, Wingard Wearables. And, uh, you know, so different ways to use the tomahawk. Now, uh, this this gentleman, Rolando, has an awesome channel uh, that I just subscribed to uh, just this week after reading this comment. And, uh, yeah, this guy knows his stuff. And he's got, uh, in terms of uh, martial craft, and he's got a great collection of amazing knives. Chief among them, if you ask me, he's got a Bill Bagwell buoy, which... Uh, you know how I feel about that. All right. Uh, thanks for the comments, one and all. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing, listening, and watching, and leaving comments. All that said, time for a pocket check. Let's get to a pocket check. What's in his pocket? Here's the knife junkie with his pocket check of knives. In my front right pocket today, I had one I have not carried in a long time. I had the Spyderco Patata in my pocket. The patata is a, a traditional Sardinian knife, Sardinia, an island off of Italy. Uh, this is basically the profile of their traditional folder that they carry on them for everything, utility, uh, food, uh, you know, cutting sausages and cheese, cutting rope, cutting people in a fight, that kind of thing. Beautiful shape and uh, an impressive addition to the Spyderco ethnic lineup here uh, this has fully uh, radiused g10 here so nicely contoured and comfortable in the hand uh, i love the look of that this one is made in italy which is good uh, i think by lion steel you can see it's a liner lock <coughs> excuse me and you've got a four inch long patata style blade uh, you've got two distinct straight cutting edges uh, with a small belly in between and a very acute point. Uh, you'll see in a minute why uh, I was carrying this today, a random as it may seem. I haven't carried this in a long time. Well, I'll show you right now, actually. Uh, my wife's cousin, uh, the father of our godchild, was just in Sardinia, and he got me this desk uh, paper, uh, what do you call it, letter opener set. And as you can see, it takes on that beautiful, patata shape let me hold that up next to one another there uh so thank you jonathan such a cool gift uh he didn't give this to me in person his mom gave this to me but i really appreciate it and i immediately said this looks sardinian it's like a patata she's like oh my gosh how did you know we were just in sardinia and uh i said that's because i'm a big dork uh so that's why i carried this today and i uh, love that knife I, I have a recurring nightmare that i'll drop that one on its tip because it's such a fine and uh, acute tip there on a distal, uh, distal tapered blade that, uh, you know, it's just dying for me to drop it on a concrete floor. All right, next up in my pockets today, I had the, here it is. The, oh no, I, I'm out of order now. 
the Benny. I had the Jack Wolf Knives Benny. This this one is the first Jack Wolf Knives knife that has taken uh, front right pocket position. Uh, not today it didn't, but it has a lot since I've gotten it. User error. This thing is super smooth. Uh, but the Benny, I, I, I just think that this might be his best-selling knife so far. Now, what do I know about it? Absolutely nothing. That's just a testament of how much I like it. It crosses over, truly crosses over. For someone like me who only carries something in the three and a half inch range, uh, this, like the uh, Spyderco Yojimbo, is a is a hall pass. I will carry this at three point what what is it? 3.4 inches, I think it is, 3.39, um, something like that. It's slightly shorter than I like to carry in the front right pocket, but man alive, does it perform. And it's got the heft, solidity, feel, and and thumbprint in the hand uh, like a much, mm, I don't know, like a much, I don't want to say much more rugged knife, like a knife you would be more apt to use in a rugged way. And the reason I say it that way is that the build on this is so refined and the materials are so lovely uh, that you don't want to bring this on the construction site, but it could do just fine out there with that S90V blade. That's not even full height hollow grind on this one, hollow ground on this one. So it'll be an even more robust blade than most uh, Jack Wolf knives, which already are pretty damn awesome. Okay, next up, Hogtooth knives and uh, the knife junkie, yours truly. This is our knife right now, the Nova 2, a continuation of the Nova series. Uh, this has ivory G10 handles, polished ivory G10 handles, and uh, red liners against that beautifully acid stone washed. Uh, 154 cm deeply hollow ground this thing is wicked it's so sharp on the edge and the point the point is so ridiculous that it is really really uh, it's really really sharp <laughs> you got to be careful with that point you really have to be careful with this point i speak from experience let's just say i truly own this one uh, but if you look at that next to the patata, it's smaller than the patata. And this is how I like it uh, mostly. For a fixed blade knife, I like to have just about the same blade length as you would have on your uh, on your average folder that you like to carry, but less handle length. That makes it easier to carry. All right, last up on me today, I had the Rosecraft Easton. Uh, the Easton, this was given to me uh, at Blade Show. And um, at at the uh, Rosecraft booth, and it's a pretty cool knife, I gotta say. Uh, really great use of the button lock and the front flipper. It's a great front flipper. I do have to use my right hand. Let's see. Let me let me take a chance with the left. Yeah, it's great. Look at how far forward that uh, front flipper protrudes. Makes it really easy to just knock it straight out. This one came not so sharp, I got to say. It was it, it's already kind of an obtuse angle behind the edge with this because it's saber ground, it's kind of thick. It it's it's not it's not that slicey a, a blade. Uh but the edge itself needed some touching up. Once I did that, it is very sharp. Uh but like I said, uh it is more wedge-like in its uh geometry. Still though, with the contoured uh, G10, the great action. And of course, for anything I actually need it for, it works great. So uh, I am digging this knife. And it is my first modern Rosecraft. That's from the 2024 lineup uh, dropped at Blade Show 2024 in June. So this is what I had on me today. An interesting lineup. The Spyderco Patata, the Jack Wolf Knives, the Benny, and the Nova Tube made by, uh, made by hand. By Matt Chase and Hogtooth Knives. And of course, I had the Easton here from Rosecraft Blades. What did you have on you? Let me know. Always interesting to, to take a look at the comments and find out what people are carrying. Uh, or join us on Thursday Night Knives. That's also a great place to do a pocket check because that's a, that's a huge feature. Well, as you know, I had this out. So I'll, I'll just show it again and let you know that the pre-order for this custom knife, and this is... Uh, 
This is an exclusive. This is The Knife Junkie, and uh, that's me and this show, and Matt Chase of Hogtooth Knives. This is our second custom production together. We did our small run of 27 knives uh, a year ago. It was a recurve Bowie on this same handle. Uh, this handle is taken from his, from Matt's EDC Tonto a knife I was carrying all the time. And I asked him, can we do a little series and put some other blades on this handle? He said, hell yes. We number them, make them special. This time we're going to do a special thing with the numbering. So no matter what number you want, if you're interested, you can get your own number on it. Uh, like my brother likes a certain tax code. So he's going to get his tax code number out of 27 or however, mem however many of these we make. Uh, your number will fit in there somehow, some way. Uh, so check it out. Go to the, uh, go to store.thenifejunkie.com. If you're interested in this, uh, I will tell you it's not an inexpensive knife, but I will also tell you it is 100% handmade here in the United States of America, uh, <clears throat> by Matt Chase of Hogtooth Knives in Massachusetts. And by the way, this is great. I've been carrying this a lot this summer. It's basically been this and the TKL Knives Agent 002, the other knife I'm collaborating on now. And this one is really nice in the waistband at three o'clock uh, for the muffin top or the spare tire or whatever you call that extra little bit of lower back fat that men of a certain age have. This uh, is very gentle on that with that short curved handle. <laughs> so. Uh, if that's how you buy your knives, you might be interested in one of these Nova 2s. Uh, go check them out. <clears throat> All right. Uh, oh, I want to show this off before we get to Life Knife News. We have a very special Knife Junkie, uh, Gentleman Junkie giveaway tomorrow night, actually, this very same week. And it is of this. We've been showing this off a lot. This is the Bald Man Knife and Tool Thickatross a custom knife from Brent Smith and Baldman Knife and Tool. Uh, this one here is a, an albatross, but a thicker version. Now, the albatross is uh, one of Brent's most popular models. And, of course, you add the thick part, thickatross. He does these very thick, robust knives, thick versions of his knives. This is the quarter-inch thick version of the albatross. And I have really fallen for this knife. Uh, he gave me this one to give away. So we will be giving this away tomorrow night. So I'm at Blade Show and he said, take this. And I said, we will give this away. And he said, okay. And so we're going to do that uh, tomorrow night. Three jimps there feel great. Really trap the, the thumb. You have a full four finger grip. And I don't care how big your hands are. Uh, they will fit on this handle, especially with that 50-50 choil up front. Uh, very, very sharp, despite it's super thick, not super thick, it's just a quarter inch uh, stock. Those swedges are very nice, by the way, for piercing. I've used this a little bit, only against paper, uh, but you can get some idea of a, a knife's geometry when uh, using it against paper. So uh, if you want this knife, you want your own custom thick atross by Bald Man Knife and Tool, Brent Smith at the helm, uh, just become a gentleman junkie. Go to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon and sign up there. Or you can scan the QR code on the screen that, or that I should say that Jim floats up on the screen uh, from time to time, and that'll take you right where you want to go. And uh, that helps you win that really cool knife. It is a really cool knife. And I, I actually, he gave me two knives to walk away with. And uh, there's another one that is very cool. I'm about to uh, post a video on so keep your eyes peeled on that all right still to come on the knife junkie podcast we have knife life news i got a really cool knife from poland i'll show you and then we'll take a look at pig stickers but before that uh there is the qr code i was just talking about or you can go to the knife junkie.com slash patreon again that's the knife junkie.com slash patreon the shockwave tactical torch is your ultimate self-defense companion Featuring a powerful LED bulb that lasts 100,000 hours, a super sharp crenulated bezel, and a built-in stun gun delivering 4.5 million volts. Don't settle for ordinary. Choose the Shockwave Tactical Torch. TheKnifeJunkie.com slash Shockwave.
You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. First up in Knife Life News, one of my favorite knife uh, knife manufacturers from China, both on the OEM front and on their own uh, in-house design front, is Bestech. And they have one coming out. Boy, talk about in-house. Uh, this is the boss's son, the guy who runs Bestech, owns Bestech. His uh, little boy uh, has designed this completely badass folder. Totally, uh, it's based on the uh, praying mantis and i gotta say i absolutely love it it's a as you can see it's a hawkbill blade this is also the first one the first best tech knife ever to feature serrations so they do this uh, version they do a fully serrated version of this it's 2.96 inches so we'll say three inches of 14 c 28 n hawkbill blade with a thumb stud and uh the cool thing about this Oh, by the way, uh, it's O Stop Hell and Gogo. -Go. And Gogo -Go is the son of the best tech boss. And this knife is called the QQ. So QQ uh, uh, was designed by Gogo -Go and O Stop Hell. Uh, and O Stop Hell helped on his, uh, the boss of best tech's daughter's design, which looked like a little cicada, I think, or something. Uh, but very cool. I like this. They both like insects. But look at this knife opened. I mean, that is a... That reminds me of your your uh, tactical spider codes with the hawkbill blades and the serrations. I absolutely love it. I'd love to get my hands on that. I love the thorax look. It looks like the thorax of a, a praying mantis. And I'll have you know, if you haven't had any experience with a praying mantis, they are super cool. Uh, I've had a few experiences where I've seen them and I've come up close and they do this thing where they... They turn their head and look at you. It's weird. It's weird. I've never had another insect do that. The other insects just reposition their body or fly away. But praying mantises look at you like, what, do I have to kill you too? Uh, so really liking the look of this Best Tech QQ. Uh, that, it, that should be out uh, on the 26th of July, 2024. So right around the corner here. All right, next up, <clears throat> another of my favorite of the Chinese manufacturers, Artisan. Uh, this time they are collaborating with Christian Porterfield. Uh, this is the second collaboration with Christian. Uh, the first one was called the Nova. Uh, this is just a tease of what's to come because this is not ready for market. But they've uh, they've leaked some pictures. You know those kind of convenient leaks, so you can kind of read the temperature. It's a pretty cool looking knife to me. Uh, S ninety V is the featured steel here on that sh uh, three inch sheep's foot. You got a front flipper and a frame lock. Of course, that'll be titanium. Uh, and they're looking to release this later this year. We don't have a name on that. Uh, but if you're a fan of Artisan and this kind of knife or a Chris Porterfield fan, uh, check it out. Incidentally, uh, I won't go down that road. All right, next up. This one is from Boker. Uh, I love one of the things I love about Boker is that they really bring super high end uh custom knife makers work into reach for me uh personally i have a um a chuck uh by boker i could never afford a chuck regularly but i have that and of uh of course my prize charles marlow squail i'd love to have a custom charles marlow uh but that day will probably never come so thank god for boker or at least thank boker for boker uh Another designer that makes incredible knives. I met him in an elevator and uh, was starstruck uh, with a bunch of other French knife makers. Guy Poggetti. Um, <clears throat> he's got this very Japanese-inspired uh, front flipper Tonto coming out with Boker called the Sanjo. And if you know uh, Guy Poggetti's work at all, you know that this is uh, you know, a signature-looking knife for him. Uh, uh, on top of that profile, which is a signature him, uh, you have that beautiful uh, burlap micarta. You've, you've got that sort of um, old school custom uh, construction where you don't see the pivot. All of that is hidden under that top layer of micarta. That's kind of an older school uh, way of doing it. I think it's cool, cool to see here. 3.39 uh, inches. Uh, that is VG10. And a lot of their uh, collaboration knives happen to be VG10. This will be out on August 9th. If you're interested, definitely 
definitely check that one out. All right, last up here, we have one from Wear Knives, who I've been following a long time on Instagram. Very cool folders. Uh, this is a Wear Knives, Civivi Knives collaboration uh, on a knife called the Nugs. The Nugs, N U G Z. Very cool looking. Um, what is that? A bellied sheep's foot with a swedge. I don't know what that is. A uh, kind of a worn cliffy thing. Uh, 3.17 inches. And it, that comes in 14 C 28 N or, uh, of course you can get the, uh, deluxe in Damascus with your average variety of Civivi handles, everything from wood G 10 to, um, carbon fiber on that Damascus blade, 3.16 ounces. Of course that might vary slightly depending on your handle material. I love the look of this one. I just think Civivi, they have a hard time messing anything up. Uh, really, it's a matter of whether you like the design. And to me, this looks good to the eye. I'm not sure how that handle would feel, uh, but I really dig the blade. So wear knives. I know I like their work a lot. And uh, I like to see this growing uh, stable of collaborative designers with Civivi. It's pretty exciting to see. All right, coming up here, we're going to take a look at another really exciting knife. I can't believe they sent me in the state of the collection. And then we'll get to pig stickers or, or what I, as a non knife, uh, as a non pig hunter, would imagine would make a great pig sticker. All that's coming up right here on the Knife Junkie Podcast. Adventure Delivered, your monthly subscription for hand-picked outdoor, survival, EDC, and other cool gear from our expert team of outdoor professionals. TheKnifeJunkie.com slash BattleBox. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. All right. Well, uh, I got an email from Herman Knives in Poland uh, saying, hey, Bob, you want to check out one of our knives? And I kind of thought it was a joke <laughs> because I don't ordinarily feature. Um, well, I shouldn't put it that way. I just didn't think that they wanted me. I thought they would want a different guy, uh, but they reached out to me. I know they've reached out to a lot of knife channels and have been on a little, uh, you know, sending these out and man alive. This is amazing. This is a great knife. This one is called the Ishtar. Uh, they have a number of different knives, and the Ishtar itself has a couple of different blades. And this one has that traditional upswept Persian. Uh, that's M390 blade steel. It's got this very fine blasting on it and a very fine full height flat grind. Super sharp. I've used this so far for just vegetables and mostly food. I think that's all I've used. Oh, no, no. I, have, I cut down some uh, cardboard. As a couple of cat food cardboard boxes last night uh, with this. So cardboard works great, but also really good with food. But just a beautiful, beautiful knife. It's a it's a uh, titanium uh, liner lock. You've got this sculpted titanium clip here with that channel underneath to fit your pocket. Really incredible action. These uh, titanium slabs have been uh, weight relieved. And on the surface, you have this, this uh, I'm calling it gravel road texture. Uh, it looks like a gravel road. And then look at this. This is really cool. Uh, the pivot on the backside to stop it from spinning. Instead of being a little D pivot, it's like a flower. It's like a blossom. Everything around here is crowned. It's very, oh, God, this is a luxury, luxury knife. Uh, but it seems pretty robust. I haven't done, like I said, I haven't done much with it. The, the hardest thing I've cut with it is cardboard. Um, and, you know, this is an EDC knife. It's not for camping and it's not for doing super hard work with. But uh, in a pinch, you could use it for self-defense. No doubt that blade is wicked. Um, and it cuts. It cuts great. I, I just, I love this knife. And it makes me think I want to get my hands on some other Herman knives. And uh, it also makes me wonder about knives like Shiragorov, which uh, I know they kind of play in a similar uh, similar playground, if you will. I think Shiragorovs are maybe they're around like this or maybe a little more expensive. I'm not sure. But 
I don't know, just having this very refined knife sent to me, it's making me um, feel like, I don't know, maybe I need more of this refinement in my refined life. Uh, feels so good in hand. And I'll, I'll tell you this, in reverse grip, which I'm sure you're not going to use it that way unless your your life is threatened, uh, you will you have a great place to put your, your thumb right here. Awesome, awesome knife. I love this. Thank you so much, Herman Knives. Now, I got to get these guys on. I'm not sure if it's these guys or this guy, or I'm not sure who runs the Herman Knives operation, but I would love to get them on the show. I've had a number of Polish knife makers on the show to include Ostap Hell, who we were, we were just talking about, and uh, they have a rich tradition and a, and a thriving current uh, knife making and knife design. Uh, arena so i'd love to i'd love to talk to herman knives this thing is amazing and uh i'm thrilled to have it all right now on to a very different type of knife i want to talk about pig stickers here and you say bob why are you talking about pig stickers uh you're not a pig hunter you're not a boar hunter well no, that's true. Uh, though I do have this fantasy, uh, this sort of Odysseus-esque fantasy where someday I, I go spear hunting for boar with some hounds and some of my men, uh, just like Odysseus did when he was 12 and he got the scar and all that. Um, but uh, all joking aside, I, I if I'm going to eat a wild game animal, which I, I don't eat enough wild game animal, it's just not my lifestyle. I would love to. For me, I have a soft spot for the swine, and uh, I just think it's absolutely delicious. When we were in uh, Tuscany, uh, the, the Tuscan ragu, the Tuscan sauce is wild boar sauce. Oh, my God. It's so good over, over fresh uh, pasta. Anyway, so I wanted to talk about this because i watched someone else's video where he was actually a pig hunter and he was talking about i need something that's seven inches so you can reach the heart and i need something that's robust and i was like okay and i bet that also means it's got to be a robust blade it's got to be very sharp it's got to be very pointy and it's got to be seven inches is what he said seven inches or longer uh because you got to reach that heart but also it's got to be rigid and uh you might want double edge if you can manage it um, got to have good ergonomics. You can hold on to it and can't be too long. I was looking at some of the knives behind me, like the Talibangs and some of the longer swords you could def definitely dispatch an animal with, but, uh, it's too much. You, you would have to be out here and you would, you might lose control in the fray with a wild pig. This is, <laughs> this is from my vast experience. So all right, so let me tell you the first one here. This is a list of 10, and uh, the first one is low-hanging fruit to warm you up to the idea. This is the Odin Wolf Sow Catcher. I mean, listen to the name, the Sow Catcher. It's built in, right? You've got a beautiful D2 blade of nine inches, I believe this is. Yeah, it's nine inches in blade length, so a very good length. Uh, we don't have too many knives of nine inches uh, unless we're talking about our big bowie knives so they start to feel like short swords i know that sounds ridiculous especially to you fix fixed blade guys but uh my my daily fixed blade carry is about four inches in length so when i have something like this in hand it's way more substantial so why is this a good pick sticker well besides the fact that it's marketed as such you've got a blade that's got a nice uh, uh, flat, uh, a, a decent size flat here. So it's nice and rigid. You also have this fuller on both sides. So it's got the cross section of basically an I beam. Uh, you've got pretty steep bevels here. You could devastate in a slash, no doubt. Uh, but, but it's not very thin. So, and you've got your double edges and you've got this wasp wasted, uh, double belly thing here. So it's it's pushing in, it's creating the widest part of the channel here, and then you're you're pushing up to the hilt. You know, you've got a hilt that is built to push against, and then it widens out towards the pommel for retraction. Uh, the the uh, the recurve is great for the retraction too. It cuts on the way in, cuts on the way out. So I think the Odin Wolf Sow Catcher with a with a uh, thong or a lanyard 
Uh, and and you you guys tell me or, or if there's anyone out there who's who's actually a pig hunter, uh, <laughs> le let me know. Let me know if my estimations are correct. Uh, some of these might be good, some of these might be bad, but this is what I'm thinking because you're going after a game that obviously is very uh, it's it's short, it's strong, it's got a tough hide, it's uh, struggling and moving and doesn't want to die. It's fighting for its life. So you need something. Um, that's going to stay in your hand and that is going to do a lot of damage on the way in and out. So I think this is a great start. The Odin Wolf Sow Catcher. Also, this handle is sort of rubbery, so it has a nice uh, grip to it. All right, this next one, this might be just for the movie, you know, where the in the movie where the guy is, uh, maybe he's a grizzled vet and he's going uh, <clears throat> pig hunting. This one maybe in the eight inch version would be better, but this is the Randall Knives seven or two seven. So the model number two with the seven inch blade, the two is the combat stiletto. You've got kind of the same thing happening here where you have uh, dual bellied e edges. Something I love about this one, though, you have kind of a, uh, a, a it's not a blunted tip, but the tip is very sharp. Let me see if I can. OK, the tip is very sharp, but it has a sort of chisel quality to it. So it's it's a pretty tough tip when turned on the side. And so I, I, I think that that's going to do a great job going into, um, you know, the thick struggling hide of a, of a wild pig. And then you look at it, it's got this uh, medial ridge that goes all the way to the point uh, and and it it has its maximal thickness all the way to about. Mm, I guess we'll we'll be generous and say three quarters of the way down the blade, and then it it starts to taper. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you have a very uh, robust point, but it it's also thinned out there, and then it widens out at this uh, medial ridge. And if you go all the way in, which you might, because this is a seven inch blade, uh, you will you will go to the hilt here and you will be able to cut out of it easily because uh, the Ricasso has this sort of sweep here. You'll be able to pull it out. Uh, handle wise, you've got double quillions that are really great for pushing, uh, whether you're like this in the hammer grip or in a saber grip or in a reverse grip here. You've got just uh, Awesome. If I were doing a reverse grip, uh, it would probably be sideways across with the quillions across the palm that way. If I had my option, maybe with my palm on the back of the of the palm here. Um, I just don't know. <laughs> but uh, because I think something like this might be a little bit small, uh, but we'll move on and, and see what you think. Uh, this, by the way, has that amazing commando handle which is contoured in such a way that it fits the hand kind of great in any position um leather you know when it gets wet it does get a little grippy uh but i'm not sure how um how long it has to be wet with something as slick as blood to get grippy so that that might be a moot point here uh, but the randall two seven there all right, next up, this one uh, I, I really uh, have faith in because one of our listeners and viewers carries this on him to vanquish uh, mountain lions and other uh, miscreants when he's out in, you know, the, the Rockies here. And it's the cold steel type hand. Again, double-edged, uh, seven-inch blade, hollow ground, but still of a thick medial ridge down to about here so almost at the tip so you get the full thickness here of that blade a very grippy handle here with this um grivery a pointy back this this part i'm not crazy about uh, because i feel like you might need to back up your thrust with your palm and that works fine with the randall works great with the odin wolf with this one with that skull crusher if you were to use this in such a way uh, that you would be, you know, using your the your other fist, or I'm sorry, your other palm to back up the pommel to thrust, or if you were using it uh, with your thumb on the back in reverse grip, 
you would want to grind this down. I've seen people grind these down on both the Tontos and on the on the Taipans. I'm not going to do that. I don't need to. I'm not taking this out uh, hog hunting. Uh, but all you hog hunters, if you've clicked on this, uh, tell me what you think. Would you want to grind this down? Is this something that would be a liability in a struggle with a wild hog? I have a feeling it would be a liability in a struggle with a wild human, uh, but I am not so sure. Uh, you could use this to brain a human or at least stun them a little. Uh, so let me know about that. Uh, but I, I was impressed when we had someone write in saying that they carry this uh, in the in the uh, deep woods to for animals uh, in case they're jumped by a, a mountain lion and you can kind of manage to pull this. You might be able to shiv it right into them. Okay, next up on this pig pig sticker uh hypothesis this hypothetical pig sticker uh i'm not sure about this one what do you think i, I since it's based on a butcher knife uh, i think it might do all right uh this is the uh partisan by station nine and uh, it's a 1095 blade and it is springy it, it's got a relatively uh low what do you call it hrc it holds its edge pretty damn well but you can also uh do some pretty, uh, uh, what do I want to say? Some pretty strong maneuvers with this blade and have it bend and have it return back to uh, normal. So I feel like with that sharp edge and then with the swedge, which is added on to make this uh, more like a trench weapon from World War I, uh, the, the idea being in World War I, a lot of people were called to battle before they could be equipped properly. And so they took whatever they could a lot of people took butcher knives and then uh, altered them for combat, like adding this swedge. And that's what this is based on. Um, like a dagger at the point. So far, we've talked about daggers. This is not a dagger, but with that swedge at the point, it's rather dagger-like. So it's going to pierce very well. And um, even though it's a it's a some it's a an eighth of an inch thick, it's still very flexible and. Uh, though I, I think that rigidity is the uh, something you really want out of a knife like this, uh, the last thing you want is rigid and brittle. Uh, you would want rigid and flexible, and I think that this might be that. Also, uh, not for nothing, but it has a very familiar form factor with that handle. Uh, the knife we all use the most, let's be honest, is our kitchen knives because we eat every day. Uh, we don't do... We might... Many of us might not do a lot of hard chores with our knife uh, daily, but we probably all use a knife daily to cut food. So the form factor is important. The familiarity with, uh, you know, uh, muscle memory and how your hand feels, I bet that also plays into it. Also, not for nothing, if you needed to back that up with your palm, uh, that's a very comfortable and secure uh, pommel shape to do that on. All right, that's the Partisan from Station 9. Next up is one that, uh, well, I love it. You know, it's like just about my favorite knife, uh, and that's the or favorite type of knife, the Loveless Subhilt Fighter. Uh, this one is the Cold Steel OSS. I chose this over my custom hogtooth knives uh, subhilt folder because this is something that's readily available for not that much scratch. This knife comes in a single edge version. It also used to come in a Warncliffe version that I wish I got back when it was available. But this is the best of the lot, if you ask me, because it is the, the true embodiment of a Loveless uh, subhilt fighter. If you don't know, uh, Robert Loveless was a knife maker uh, who created a number of iconic designs the shoot knife, the New York special, and the subhilt fighter, I guess, chief among them. And uh, the sub hilt is this part here. It's a secondary hilt behind the forefinger. It allows you to uh, allows you greater dexterity when manipulating the blade, and then also uh, gives you a solid hard point for you to pull against when drawing the knife out of your victim. <laughs> it's a fighting knife through and through, no doubt. And that's why I feel like uh, this would make a great pig pig sticker uh, because you got double edge. You've got the uh, benefit of the clip point shape for penetration. Uh, and then, but you have a sharp edge all the way up to the hilt. 
And then you've got this super grippy handle material with that sub hilt. This one, by the way, is all kind of dusty and dirty. This lives on top of our refrigerator. So uh, if, if I'm getting something out of the fridge and you hassle me, you might find this uh, up in your grill. Uh, but other than that, I think a pig sticker, it would be great. Because really, you know, the, the Randall made would probably be a good knife too. But do you really want to get all sorts of blood and viscera on that beautiful handle? Or would you rather have this in your hand, uh, not only for the secureness of grip, but also for just uh, getting all that stuff on it? You just hose this down and be ready to go. That's Aus 8 blade steel. It's a blasted finish. I sanded it uh, down a little bit, and it's absolutely positively razor razor sharp love this thing that's the sheath it comes with you can see the the dust in the corners here on that sheath all right next up this one is more about the idea uh, because i think it might lack in length uh, but i'm talking about bayonets this is the m8 bayonet my brother-in-law gave this to me this was his sheath in iraq his knife, actually, his bayonet itself was stolen, uh, as often happens uh, in the service. Uh, but he still had his sheath, and he wanted to give it to me, so he bought a new knife to put in it. And it's very prized. It hangs on the on the wall, not here, but over there. And I love this thing. But why why do I think it'd be a good pig sticker? Because look at how slender that blade is, and yet the first. Uh, more than a third, I guess the first, well, let's say, say the first third of it is uh, double-edged. It's slender. It's um, It's got a dagger grind, so there is there is no more hang-up on either side than the other. And then it's got a very good guard and a, a great grip. You can get a really good full grip on this. It's knurled and textured. And then you have the giant, of course, uh, the lug that goes over, or, you know, this ring that goes over the uh, muzzle and this guard down here, you have a great way of holding on to the knife, a great way of not slipping onto the blade, and a great slender blade that will definitely do the trick. The qu My question is, uh, is the six and a half inch length too short? for the job. You guys can let me know if you've ever uh, stuck a pig with a knife. Uh, do let me know. According to the guy I was watching, this might be a little short, uh, and I will take his word for it. All right, next up, this, this is the only one of its sort on the list. It's another cold steel, and it's a Bowie. But this one is the Laredo Bowie. And... Um, Contained within its internal logic in terms of design, it's a slender Bowie blade. It's got a sharpened swedge, a zero ground swedge, and the tip is very much like a dagger. So I feel like once it, it slips in this far, it's going gonna, it's gonna to keep going uh, because it's not widening out and it doesn't have a hump to get over. It doesn't have an excessive belly up front to get over. It's just going to slip in once it breaches, and I feel like you're going to go all the way to the hilt with this one. Um, I think that this would be a great pig sticker. Uh, it's not a dagger shape. It's not even on both sides, but I feel like that sharpened swedge and the um, basic parallel lines of the spine and edge and, and the extreme sharpness of the edge, the toughness, thickness of this 3 sixteenths 3 sixteenths inch thick blade uh this will really uh this will do some serious work i think that's actually a quarter inch let me see does it matter not really but let me check some. yeah that's a quarter inch <clears throat> great knife of course the coffin shaped handle and the guard work in concert coffin shaped handle swells ever more until the end of the uh, pommel and then of course you've got the guard to stop you in that direction so when you're pulling it out uh, you've got a widening handle uh, to help you do the job. Now, if I were using this to pig stick or to actually fight, I would put a couple of ranger bands on this uh, somewhat slick faux coca bolo handle. All right, next up, this one I'm sure, I, this one might be, mm, this is my second 
favorite on the list for this job, and that is the traditional Filipino weapons daga. Daga is Tagalog, I think, for dagger. So this is from their uh, sword and dagger, one of their two sword and dagger uh, sets, uh, the, the better of the two, if you ask me. Of course, it's not a dagger in the tra traditional sense that it's a symmetrical double-edged blade. Uh, they just mean dagger like a smaller knife uh, compared to the sword that goes with this. That's the same shape. This one has a swedge. I always wish this swedge was sharpened just to a zero edge would be fine. I'm a simple man. I don't need much. Uh, but a very rigid blade. You've got a, about a quarter inch uh, thick of steel here. And then you have a saber grind. So you have the full thickness of the steel that goes all the way up to nearly to the point. So in terms of rigidity, you are there. In terms of grip, no one beats a Filipino grip. This is amazing. You've got up here, of course, uh, the most important part is that you can get it in without sliding up on the, on the blade. Here you have this big piece of copper uh, coming down there on the, um, on the forefinger. That'll stop you. And then when you retract, you've got this incredible bird's beak and, and uh, hook here on the sort of fleur de -lis pl uh, pommel that will allow you to extract it, no problem. But nice and thin, very sharp. You got a belly up here, you'll cut up to the belly and the rest will slip right in. Uh, this one, 11 inches, I believe. About 10 and a half inches in blade length, like the Vaquero. So I think this is my second favorite of the bunch uh, in terms of for this job. And I think this next one might be the Primo, even though the last one is the namesake. So this is the Cold Steel Rondell Dagger. Uh, this is based on a uh, medieval design. So uh, this is the kind of dagger that knights carried. So they would engage with their swords and their pole arms and their long maces and such. And when they would come into a clinch and those weapons were rendered useless, they would pull these out and seek chinks in the armor uh, or, or, or seek areas, uh, exposed areas of chain mail to push these through, uh, but areas between the armor. And it's a, a three-sided dagger. So it's, uh, it's now you're not cutting anything with this. You could hit really hard on someone's skin and split it and do nasty stuff like that, but you're not cutting any uh, salami with this knife. Uh, the rondel aspect of it is talking about the pommel and the guard, and uh, with armored hands, uh, armored uh, uh, what do you gauntleted hands? I guess this was a great way to engage uh, for both pushing and thrusting, and then retracting uh, to keep this thing in your hand. This, to me, I think is probably going to be the best here in this list because you've got 10 and a half inches uh, of super rigid steel here. Uh, the edges are sharp-ish, uh, sharp to do the, the forward thrusting job. Now, you, uh, you pig hunters out there, let me know. Do you need something flatter than this? Do you need something that actually does have a cutting blade? Or is this... Uh, like In other words, do you have to be too accurate with this to make it work and you need to kind of cut around with it? Or would this just be the ultimate uh, pig sticker? I don't know. Uh, you tell me, uh, but before you do, take a look at this very last one. This one is actually like the first one, the Odin Wolf Sow Catcher. This one is called the Wild Pig Hunter. And this is by Cole, uh, by Topps. Uh, this is one of my favorite knives. I mean, I say that about them all. I love this Topps knife. Uh, this one was given to me by my wife, by my suggestion, of course. You can see the differential heat treat here. This is their acid rain wash finish where you can see that. Uh, this is 1095 blade steel, but you can see how it's uh, hardened here. And you can see that difference. Uh, everything above this temper line is softer steel. And that's going to help you. You want you want it to be flexible, not too, not too. Uh, you don't want it to be brittle, brittle, and you you want rigidity, but not too much rigidity. And so the differential heat treat gives you that. You get extra hard on the edge where you need it, but the rest is flexible and can handle it. You turn it on its side, and look down from the top. You can see how this knife re retains its full thickness 
to right about there where the uh, swedge goes away. It's a hard cut swedge and you've got uh, two integral quillions. This is a full tang knife based on a Russian fighting knife, Russian military knife. And um, I have no doubt that this thing would do exactly what it's meant to do uh, as a wild pig hunter. Uh, not only do those quillions help you from going onto the blade, but also these um, finger choils uh, do the same. And then as you can see at, at towards the pommel, it widens out. Of course, that's for uh, pulling the blade back out. And uh, and then of course you take it back to the, the lodge, you cut it up and you make your tomato ragu. So as someone who has never killed a uh, pig with a knife, Tell me, does this list make sense? Uh, how would you change this list? And, uh, you know, let me know. I'm genuinely interested because some of the qualities that go into dispatching a pig are valuable for other lines. So uh, I am curious. Do let me know. All right. Well, thanks for joining me on this little pig sticker journey. Uh, and thank you uh, to YouTube that uh, helped <laughs> through their algorithm help me come up with this topic because uh some reason i got a couple of things on me uh in my feed about pig stickers and i was like oh let me weigh in if that's what you need i think i got a couple of here so uh thanks for joining me uh be sure to join us tomorrow night for thursday night knives where we give away this beautiful beautiful bald man knife and tool thick across to one lucky gentleman junkie. All right, for Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24 7 listener line at 724 466 4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the knife junkie podcast